Hey, it's David. Do you think we can make a new headlamp bracket? I've modified the stock headlamp mount position on this bike. Um, I did it in a couple of ways. The first thing I did was to trim off the uh, shroud, leaving just the basic uh, clamp. And the second thing I did, the stock position mounts on top of the tree uh, top yoke here, um, which works well. Um, but I wanted a something a little bit lower profile. So I wanted it under here. Now the thing is you can't actually mount it under here because it doesn't fit. So you've got to mount it just below and space it so it will sit there. Now that's more the look I wanted. Now there's one other modification um, that I made and that's the positioning of the idiot lights. Now. What I did was to move the idiot lights. Now, these uh, brackets come in a number of different configurations over the years with different sportsters. And with some of them, the earlier ones, you actually get a little panel sits in here, which I thought was quite nice. So what I did was I modified this to sit underneath here so that uh, you can look down um, and see these idiot lights. Now you do have to be sitting quite forward on the bike. If you sit back, you can't see them. But if you're in a normal riding position, then they are visible. The issue here, if we can see it um, in the light, is that uh, these idiot lights smack into the back of the bowl, which is not good. Um, because what it means is that uh, it makes it hard to push the bowl back to alter your headlight beam. So that's another factor that needs to be taken into consideration. So I've got some thinking to do and some playing to come up with uh, how I want this to go. Right, so I've been digging through bits of scrap metal, trying to come up with ideas. Um, one of the things that uh, I need to think about is there's very little clearance under here. You certainly wouldn't be able to put a nut or anything underneath here. The hole through here comes out really tight against uh, the actual uh, yoke here. So there's, I mean, there's, there's a couple of mil gap there. So it's really, as I say, really, really tight. Previously, I had a little bit of tube in here that was used as a spacer and uh, that works. The tube doesn't sit square, the tube sits forward on this because it can't actually touch. Um, if you were to grind the edge off you could probably get it in a bit closer but that's about it. What I'm thinking is I either come over the top with say a bit of box section so that uh, that sits over there. That's about the same height underneath and I could then mount this um, somehow off of this, maybe cut out into here so that you can drop that in. I think I can make it work but the problem is that I would end up with a this, well okay there's a couple of problems. I'd end up with a square bracket on here which wouldn't really work with the bike at all. It would look a bit odd. And secondly, no matter what I did, it's got to come over this, these mounts here. So the, the top of this inside here would be sitting over those like that so that it bolted down um, onto there. And that's going to leave this supporting all the way of the headlight, and don't forget there's glass in here as well because it's a glass headlight, bouncing up and down as you ride the bike. So I could do it, but I'm going to need some really thick wall 
uh, box section. Now I do have some thick wall box section, but what I'm thinking is that maybe instead um, it's just a clamp, a piece of thick steel under here and then bolt through from the top. But that would clamp straight onto that piece of metal. About that under there, bolt that onto there. Then that would give me a mounting about here, which I think would work. Right, I have a pin punch, it's not a sharp point, it is just the right size. These holes are threaded by the way, um, but that doesn't really help me in this configuration. It's just, just the right size to fit down inside the threads. And it's just enough to leave a mark. It might not be denting the metal, but it's certainly denting this sticker that is on the underneath. Right, so that gives us a bit of a uh, bit of a mock-up. That's perfect. They're going to do a little bit of cutting down, but let me take this back off, put those on, and then see how it looks. All right, let's just finesse the corner of those and see if they can they'll fit a little bit better. Okay, that's fitting uh, a little bit better. I'm a bit happy with that. Right, these are cold welds. There's no real structural strength in them at all. The bolt which runs through it is bolting because the bolt that runs through it is bolting from the top plate through to the bottom plate so these really are more as i say i wouldn't quite call it decorative but they are just spacers however i'm going to run some more weld around the back and uh, see if i can get it a bit hotter this time because um, we're plating a very thick steel plate here to a very thin piece of tubing right that's better there's a bit more heat in it this time and now it's actually fused right not great welds by any means but not too much heat into the threads Right, with the plate roughly cut, or the bracket roughly cut to size, let's uh, see if we can uh, mark out where the holes for these are going to go.
Right, so with the holes drilled, um, the bracket is now functionally complete. There's a lot of work still to be done to it, but it's functionally complete. So let's see how it fits. Right, so there we are. Um, I realised early on that I made a mistake in welding these nuts on at that early phase. Um, that was a big mistake because it's made my life much harder in fabrication. What I should have done was to have left them loose, uh, just put with nuts on, um, even though that would be a little more fiddly in the assembly phase because what's happened is I can't put that plate of metal flat when I've been cutting it and so forth. Um, now, for that reason, I am going to weld these nuts on for the front ones, just so it gives me back a level surface, but even so, it's far from ideal. So that was definitely a mistake. Now let's test the functionality of it. Yeah, lock to lock with no problem, no interference. Um, so this is in the fully back position at the moment. Right, let's get those nuts welded on. I'm out of time for today. Um, fabricating takes a very long time to do because you're thinking as you're doing and modifying plans as you go along. I have however just realised in mocking this up that I made a mistake. Um, I cut off too much metal on here which means I'm going to have to change um, my plan or the design for the bracket. It's not a bad thing because it will actually save me time. Um, I mean that I'll just well, I'll explain in the next video. Um, so, in the next video, I'm going to finish this off, uh, do all the cosmetic work uh, that's required. I won't paint it just yet because it'll be painted with the rest of the parts, but I will get it functional and uh, ready to be bolted on. So, thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you guys again next time.